At first blush, this may give the impression to Canadians that you're actually downsizing. My substantive question is, why is the executive space that was purpose-built in, in, in 2018 for use by the Consul General and use by Canada's ambassador to the United Nations not sufficient and that we had to incur um, millions of dollars of extra expenses that are going to be financed through the taxes of Canadians who are struggling to survive. Um, in We're the here today in the context in Canada of a cost of living crisis. We have one in four Canadians saying that they're going to be using food banks uh, this fall. We know that uh, rent prices have doubled, mortgage prices have doubled. And the Prime Minister's media buddy, who's uh, making a, a very healthy salary by uh, any measure compared to um, Canadian salaries, uh, is getting a $9 million condo uh, for his uh, use as a residence. I know you said that its primary purpose was as a workspace, but if it's clocking on average about two business functions per month, um, and he's sleeping there 30 times per month, it sounds like its primary purpose is as a residence. Um, who signed off on the decision, sir? The, the most senior person who signed off. Just the name, please. Mr. Ch Mr. Chair, the transaction was signed by the Deputy Head of Mission based on a written delegation from the Director General responsible for real property planning and stewardship. Who is, who is the Director General? The, the Director General is part of our real property team uh, and who was supported by the governance and the process that was reviewed. And the, and the DG's name is? And the DG's name is Frank Uzimbe. And the deputy head of and it was the deputy head of mission who who had the delegated authority and who's the deputy head of mission at the time, Mr. Chair, I'd like to clarify that the uh, the mission actually are not part of the approval process or the decision making. The, the mission, the DHOM, was actually uh, had the authority from headquarters, the DG, who had the authority to sign that transaction, which is understandable. The, the, the name, sir, uh, uh, Rob Mc. Carbon. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. In 2018, the um, Office of the uh, Consul General and the Embassy to the United Nations moved into a joint workspace, which primary purpose is, is work, um, near Grand Central Station in New York City. So that facility has an executive dining room, if I understand correctly, and a reception space for up to 150 people. Is that correct? J just a yes or no, because I have a substantive question. Mr. Chair, uh, yes, the, uh, the environment has uh, an area that can accommodate. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the full kitchen that would be required, which would drive us to actually have quite expensive um, costs for actually providing uh, the food by a caterer. Okay. So um, do you, does Mr. Clark prepare the food himself at his apartment, or is there a caterer or a, or a hired chef that does that? Mr. Chair, uh, I'd be pleased to answer that question. I'll turn very quickly to uh, the DG. I, I, yeah. I think we know the answer is that there are uh, third-party costs associated with the food preparation, irrespective of where it happens. My, my substantive question is, why is the executive space that was purpose-built in, in, in 2018 for use by the Consul General and use by Canada's ambassador to the United Nations not sufficient and that we had to incur... Um, millions of dollars of extra expenses that are going to be financed through the taxes of Canadians who are struggling to survive um, in the form of a nine uh, million dollar penthouse on Billionaires Row in New York City for Justin Trudeau's media buddy. Why couldn't we use the space that was purpose built instead of getting this uh, this luxurious um, location that's primary purpose is just for Mr. Clark's uh, lodgings. Mr. Chair, uh, welcome this question where we can actually articulate the space requirement that we provide and the reason behind it. I'll, talk, I'll turn very quickly to uh, the ADM of real property because that can articulate the need uh, that are actually identified as we provide this kind of like uh, space. So I'll turn to Mr. Robin Zibou that can articulate more details about it. 
Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chair. Um, as um, in opening remarks, we said the uh, official residence has served as a uh, place of living, but also as a platform for representation. We do have representation space at the uh, consulate that is now amalgamated with the uh, um, the, the, the mission to un the United State Nation. We did that in 2018 to eco to, um, to, to, to to create savings and synergies. There is representational space in the office, but it doesn't allow for the kind of uh, activities and representation that the official residence would. Uh, the, the new official residence has been acquired. Uh, it, is, it is smaller. It can accommodate smaller. Thanks very much. We, we, we heard all of that information already. Um, that was a, a, it took you a minute to not offer us any new information. We had previous representatives in the space. I think um, now Senator Pamela Wallen occupied the, the previous um, residence, uh, identified it as sufficient. Um, the $1.8 million estimate for renovations of the old residence in, um, suddenly became insufficient in 2023, uh, which was right around the time that um, that Mr. Clark was the new um, the new head of mission or the new consul general there. Uh, what happened that got the ball rolling there? Was it Mr. Clark that initiated the request? Um, and if it was not Mr. Clark, who was it? question. Uh, I'd like to start by saying that there was no influence from Mr. Clark. He was not involved in the consultation or decision process. Okay. So would you, be, would you be able to table all correspondence on the subject of the new residence uh, or the, dis the transition to a discussion on a new residence instead of renovations? Mr. Chair, as explained, we have a governance that's actually managed by Ed Quarter and we'd be pleased to actually uh, table what the whole process is and how we got to uh, the... The correspondence, uh, sir. You'll table the correspondence? Mr. Chair, I can look at what's available um, and, and get back to you on that. Well, if there was correspondence, you'll table it? Yeah, I'll look into Perfect. it. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Brock, please, for five minutes. The acquisition of this extravagant uh, condo on Billionaire's Row has garnered a lot of attention across this country as well as with media. I'm curious as to the consultations that the four of you have had prior to today's appearance with Minister Jolie. Mr. Chair, uh, we have followed the uh, governance and process according to our it's delegation. It's not the question, the sir. It's not the question. I have limited time. I'm interested in your discussions with Minister Jolie in relation to your appearance. Did it happen? Mr. Chair, no, there was no uh, interaction with Mr. Did Jolie. Did you receive any emails from Minister Jolie with respect to your appearance? Mr. Chair, no, we haven't received any emails. Has she you. weighed in on the controversy surrounding the acquisition of this, of this property? Mr. Chair, uh, the minister was not involved in this uh, Thank you. process. Was she briefed by you? Minister, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we actually have brief, uh, as per uh, normal process, the minister. Was she office. briefed on the acquisition of this, per of this property? Mr. Chair, she was informed, in the uh, chief of staff was informed in June 2024. I'm going to push back on some of the narrative that uh, has been circulated among Canadians. You're quoted, your department is quoted as follows, considering the high renovation costs for the current residence and value of the property, GAC has recommended a relocation to a new, smaller, more suitable and more economical apartment. In addition to representing a savings opportunity of more than $2 million, it will also reduce ongoing maintenance costs, property taxes, support future program needs, and meet representational requirements. Now, at first blush, this may give the impression to Canadians that you're actually downsizing. And when Canadians think of the term downsizing, they think of perhaps raising a family, having an empty nest, and moving from a four- to five-bedroom home to a small one-bedroom, two-bedroom condo. But that's the furthest from the truth in relation to the acquisition of this property on Billionaire's Row. In fact, the old property on Park Avenue was roughly 3,800 square feet, and you downsized, wait for it, to a whopping 3,600 square feet. The actual rooms have actually increased. The old property had 12 rooms. The new property has 14 rooms. So 
you're not you're not giving the, the Canadians the full truth here. You're not you're not being honest with them in terms of the actual blueprint. Now I also want to talk about the operating costs. You keep talking about these savings. We're saving Canadians upwards to $115,000 per year. I've got the listings from both of these properties from a, a website called uh, Street Easy. The old monthly maintenance cost, this is the common fees, this would be the taxes, is $13,147 US per month. The new property is not a savings at all. Taxes and common charges are actually $15,213. So 2000 U.S. per month more for this new property that's supposed to be saving Canadians value. You're misrepresenting the facts. You're not telling the truth to Canadians. So I want you to be aware of this, and I want you to comment on it, because you talk in broad strokes about these savings. When you dig down into this, there's no savings at all. Now let's talk about the, the, um, the utility costs. What, are, what currently are the utility costs on Park Avenue versus utility costs on 57th Street? Is there a savings? Mr. Chair, welcome. The question to clarify the costs. I will turn to uh, my colleague, uh, Adrian. I, I, didn't, I didn't need Gurell. that, sir. That's a yeah. waste of time. If anyone yeah. knows the answer, please, Mr. Dubo, answer the question. I don't have the, uh, the cost of the utilities at the new place. We have not occupied it yet, So, but I have the total amount that is forecasted to spend on the ongoing basis per month. Okay, and is that a savings over Park Avenue, or is it the same, or is it more? It's, it's a saving. Savings? Yes. You'll table that for us? We could. You'll table the, the, the monthly utility costs for Park Avenue and the monthly utility costs for West 57th, okay? Now, what else about oh, the prop- Sorry, Mr. Brock, that is our time. Thank you. <laughs>